Hi, welcome to Dog Show Mentor Live. I'm Lee Whittier, founder, host, and mentor. I'm happy to have you here today, and I want to start out with finding out who's here, where you're from, and what your breed is. You know the drill if you've been here before. So tell us where you're from. Who's here today? Welcome to Dog Show Mentor Live. And what we're going to talk about today is you. And we're, ta- we're going to talk about, are you indistinguishable from the pros? What is your presentation like? And does it matter if you're indistinguishable from the pros? So we're going to talk about all these different angles. So some of you know who I am and some of you don't, but I've been in dogs since 1981. I've really been in dogs my whole life. Um, my mother bred um, collies and golden retrievers. Hey there, Pauline from Lake Bluff, Illinois with Chaz. Welcome. And I've been actively breeding since 1986. Hey, Jane Graham from Pennsylvania with Chihuahuas. So I bred Rottweilers for 25 years and uh, I've been breeding Tibetan Terriers for about 12 years. Hey, Judy from Chicago with Kazins. And I've been judging since 2000 uh, with a short hiatus for working for the American Kennel Club. But I started Dog Show Mentor six years ago. Hey, Julie Elliott from uh, Arizona. Nice to see you. Cindy from Pennsylvania, Spanish Water Dogs. Love that. Jessica from Durango. I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in Colorado um, this fall. I'm so excited. Um, so I started Dog Show Mentor six years ago, and some of you know that story um, about how I decided that somebody had to do this. Somebody had to bring a deeper knowledge and a judge's perspective to the larger community. And because the American Kennel Club does not like us as judges to um, mingle with exhibitors, Um, at the shows because of the appearance of impropriety, um, I developed a program for mentoring where people can mingle with me. And uh, so I started this private group. So hello, Lisa from Potomac Falls, Virginia with Louchins. Oh, that breed. And Josie from Edmonton, Alberta. Thank you, boxers and rats. And Dawn from Nebraska with Glenn's. Hey, Dawn, welcome back. So, you know, I'm currently involved as a show chair. Um, The other night I gave a presentation to the New Jersey Federation of Dog Clubs about what owner handlers really want and how to improve their shows by giving owner handlers what they want. So... Although we're going to be talking today about whether you are indistinguishable from the pros, I would love to hear also from you. Just give us give a little shout out about something that you really appreciate that clubs do for you. What do you what do you want from clubs? Okay. So let's get started on the topic. So being indistinguishable from the pros, is that a goal that's worthy of your time and energy? So that's the first question. Is it worthy of your time and energy? Hey, Maggie from Chicago, otter hounds. Love those otters. Um, Is this a goal that will propel your dog into the winner's circle? Question number two. And question number three is, does it in fact matter to the judges? Do they care? If you look like a pro, they can't tell. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, now on number three, if I'm in an area that I don't know, I have no idea. I don't know who people are, who's the pro, who's not the pro. But we're going to get to a story and I'm going to tell you a little story about how I embarrassed myself. Right? I embarrassed myself. 
And I hear that um, we're having a little technical difficulty uh, with our program. So if you can't, if you can't see me or hear me, uh, I apologize, but I'm going to keep going as if you can. So Jessica says, my local kennel club offers free handling classes to members. Well, that's nice. The president sat ringside and gave me feedback after each round. I went from last place to group three in three days. Whoa. Now is that that she sat ringside at the show. That's a nice kennel club. Jessica, what is your kennel club? So everyone else can join and vie for group three. Hmm? Okay. So first we're going to answer the question. Is this goal worthy of your time and energy? So it depends. The answer is yes and no. If if it's only to be thought of as a pro because of your ego, it, it's, it's, it's because it does not include your connection with your dog. So that makes the competition about people and not dogs. And to me, that's not what dog shows are about. All right. It is worthy of your time if you're enhancing your ability to show your dogs to its best, right? You want to show the dog to the best advantage, then it is worthy of your time. But the core goal is not for you to be better than someone else. The objective is to be better for the benefit of your dog and to enhance his virtues so that the judge can really judge him best ability. Okay. So here we go. Who else has come? Dawn, welcome. Welcome. Um, Border Terriers in Virginia. Yes, at the show, uh, Durango Kennel Club. I also have an amazing girl. Jessica, oh, Durango. I've judged that show. I love that show. I love... Um, Barb and Don have, have been doing that show for a long time. They do a fantastic job. So congratulations. All right. And, and the other thing is you don't have to drive three hours to a handling class like some people do. So I want a few more people to come on here and say, is it important to you to be indistinguishable from the pros? Talk about that a little bit. All right. So is this, is this goal a goal that will propel your dog into the winner's circle to be indistinguishable from the pros? Is that going to propel you into the winner's circle? Who says yes? I'm not seeing it, folks. Come on, give me some answers here. There you go. Sandy says, I think it is to present my dog to her best. So being indistinguishable from the pros is important to you so that your dog, right? Your dog can be best. Lisa says, I want to be pro-like in my presentation of my dog. Okay, well, that's fair. Sue says, yes. She wants to be indistinguishable from the pros. And Jeannie says, it doesn't hurt. Well, there's that. <laughs> Sandy says, possibly. And Don says, perhaps, but quality of the dog is important. So Don, quality of the dog is important. But being indistinguishable from the pros is not in itself a key point as long as you are presenting the dog professionally in a way that I can see how beautiful your border terriers are. Okay, Donna says, to a point, I wanna be seen as owner handler, but you wanna be as professional as the pros. Right on, Donna, right on. So presenting 
at the best of the dog's abilities and your abilities, right? But that's it. But that's exactly right. Your dog's abilities as well, because some dogs don't have the ability to move out freely if they're supposed to, or have a jaunty gait if they're supposed to. Right? Important things, Donna. I forget what your what your breed is. I need to be better than or equal to. Better than or equal to the pros. I like that. Um, I have always said as an owner handler, you need to have a better dog, better quality dog in better condition and better trained and beautifully presented, right? That's how I have said for myself as I started with, you know, with my dogs is conditioning, 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 training, 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 and training myself. I worked on it for years and I still work on it because now I'm showing a different breed and I have to elevate my presentation as that breed should be presented. Julie says, I can train my dog better or as good as the pros, which will make my dog stand out well above a handler's dog. Let me think of that. I can train my dog better or good as the pros, which will make my dog stand out well above a hand. You know, that could be true. And I'm trying to think about that from a judge's perspective. So if I, if I see an owner handler out there, and I don't know whether it's a pro or an owner handler, but that dog is presented better, yeah, it would make your dog stand out more. But it wouldn't matter as if it was professionally presented. It doesn't matter because I won't know. I don't know, Julie, if you're a pro or an owner. It doesn't matter. You're, you're an exhibitor to me, right? It's being an exhibitor. I have always thought that there is not a pro out there that can show an Irish wolfhound like I can. Woohoo, Jeannie, especially if it's my own. You, you know, you are so right on with that. You are so right on with that. And that, that's a, that is a hard breed to show because they're so big and they have their own unique essence, don't they? Jeannie, describe the essence of the Irish wolfhound to me, please. Denise gives me a long one. I'm going to try to shorten it. Okay. That's exactly right, Sue. You know your dog better. You ought to be able to present it better. And you should have that connection, right? That deep connection with your dog of uh, respect. The dog should trust you that you're going to support their experience in the ring. All right, Denise. I'm going for it. Yes and no. I'll have to tell you about our experience at my specialty with my puppy. The judge let us work through it and gave other handlers tips to improve presentation of their dog. That's a good judge. We went over handlers, even though our presentation wasn't perfect, but her movement and structure shined that day. Beautifully said, and obviously an excellent judge, someone who was, who recognized quality and quality is, is one of the four primary things that we want to look at. So we want to look at the quality of the dog. And obviously that judge did that on the day. Jeannie says, calm and st the essence of the Irish wolfhound. I love this, Jeannie. Calm and stately. They are not animated. So you really need to know the breed to bring out the stately, commanding manner. Well said. Well said. I um, I have seen many Irish wolfhounds and uh, for many years, more than I should really say. And it's a it's an amazing breed. And I have a friend who breeds them, so it's um it's it's lovely. So, so the goal of being indistinguishable from the pros is not going to propel you to the winner's circle, is it? It's not going to automatically propel you. You've got to have the dog. 
And one of the things I like to talk about Dog Show Mentor is the quality of the dog that you're showing and understanding, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and understanding <coughs> the quality of the dog. Wow. <coughs> All right. So let's uh, talk about if your goal is to get to the winner circle <coughs> and you need to bring out that dog's essence and it's, <coughs> and it's your breed, you ought to be able to know what the essence of the breed is and where your dog's virtues in that lie so where is that quality where's the quality where is the essence where's the style and we talk about those things so if we know our dog and our breed better our breed you know there's some some professional handlers who who show one breed or a couple of breeds only and they, those people really understand because those are, can be often the ones to beat because they understand the essence of the breed, the quality, the style, the movement, and how to bring that out. So you also know those things. And so you have to be able to bring out the quality, the style, the movement, the essence of your dog. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story <clears throat> about a time that I really messed up as a judge. Um, it, I didn't mess up on my choices. I messed up on um, the answer <clears throat> to this. Does it matter if you're indistinguishable from the pros? So I was at a show and I was judging and I was judging a breed and I had an exhibitor and, and, and she seemed to be struggling in some way. And so I helped her in some way. Well, guess what? She was not inexperienced. And in fact, she was quite experienced, but I thought she was a newbie. And she was highly insulted, highly insulted. And I felt terrible, of course. Um, so what I want to know from you is, if you were that exhibitor, because I know a lot of you here are have some you know, quite a bit of experience. I know um, um, Jeannie and Denise and uh, Julie and Dawn, um, Sandy, uh, let me see what else I think has experience. And some of you, I don't know if you have experience or not, Tracy, I think you do. So, um, what would you have done if a judge had treated you like a new person? a little bit of extra kindness, a little bit of extra encouragement, maybe a little direction, what would you have done? Tell me what you would have done. How would you have felt? Who wants to go first? I know you're out there and I know you're thinking about this. So Sandy says, I may have laughed about it to myself. Okay, good. Sense of humor always helps in, in awkward situations. <clears throat> Pam says, I would take what they said to heart and worked on what they recommended. Ah, well, I have to say, I think I would have also. Um, Ta says, I wouldn't have been upset. Good. Sue, happened to me, just said thank you. <laughs> That's a, um, that's a lovely way to handle it. And Marie says, I would have been open to the experience. I think if we were not learning, then we are stagnant. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you're here and you said that. Sierra says, 
I personally think there's always room for improvement and work on whatever it was. Absolutely. John says, exactly. Would feel supported. Pauline says, I would appreciate any advice. There's so much to learn. Cindy says, I think it would be like any advice. Take what you can, use it, and leave the rest ringside. Yes, it may have made me do a review. Yep. I would love it. Denise says, I would love it. I would think any tips would be worthy taking heed. Dawn says, we have to be open to learning. Thank you so much for that. I like the feedback. Always helps from Teresa. And Jeannie says, once you stop listening, you stop learning, and then you stop earning. Earning, in this case, is earning knowledge. Absolutely. So I also learned from it. I learned that um, we always need to be extra careful. But I don't think kindness is, is ever inappropriate. So we just need to be respectful of each other. And hopefully any feedback um, and extra attention would be taken as important, let's say. Teresa says, I like the feedback, always helps. Donna says, I always say the day I stop learning is the day I need to quit. Absolutely. And the day I stop learning is, you know, I don't, I don't know when that, that's never going to happen for me. Um, when I'm, you know, sitting in my, sitting in my chair at, at 99, I'm going to be watch, bird watching and, uh, you know, speaking into some, you know, when I'm 99, there's going to be some way, um, some mega internet thing that will be able to tell me what bird that is outside that I can't identify. Or um, I'll be watching my dogs and watching their movement and uh, taking that in. Um, it's, it is, it's, it's time. So, so being indistinguishable from the pros, if you want to present professionally, put in the time, the resources, the dedication, you know, continue to evolve your tools, right? Always getting new tools. And, and all of you are saying that you're doing that and you're here. So I know that you care and I know that you're, you're trying, um, but you know, always get a deeper understanding of your breed standard. I have a system called Spotlight on Your Breed where I teach you, yes, even you 20 and 30 year breeders. I know there are people 30 years on here. Uh, I teach you how to deepen your knowledge of your standard. And even people who have uh, great experience and knowledge who teach and mentor others in the breed, find uh, that the judge's perspective, who's not a breeder, how they can read the standard and how it can be interpreted somewhat differently than how you do. So it's it's really a, a key point in the, in the dog show mentor program. You know, don't forget strategically prepare for the ring. Strategically make your uh, schedule, your show schedule. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to go there because it's five minutes from my house. But if you have an opportunity for best in show and it's two hours away, you know, look at the schedules of, of dogs in and around your radius. You know, how far are you willing to drive for a best in show? Or points, right? I, I'm, I'm willing to fly for points if I need points. So every, every breed is different. Every dog is different. If you have Irish wolfhounds, you're not going to be flying. So you're going to be driving. Um, or maybe you have a private jet. I don't know. So strategically prepare for the ring and for your shows. Right. Crystal says, we drove 12 hours. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you made it. Um, 
And always, you know, one, one of my most important things that I tell people, maybe the most important thing is make sure you support your dog's experience in the ring. Even when you have that dog that's willing to stand at a six foot length from you, freestanding, and the judge is walking around it, or maybe you've got other exhibitors in the ring that are moving, always have that bubble around your dog that they understand that you're supporting them. And that goes right down the lead, that you're aware that your dog wants your support. Okay. And don't forget that superstar quality commitment. Okay, that's, that's the last tip for today is your superstar quality commitment. And we're near the end of this uh, Facebook Live and I wanna give a little shout out to uh, Dog Show Mentor Program. And we are starting Jumpstart in July, which is at 90 days to your wildest dreams. It can jumpstart you to Montgomery County. It can jumpstart you to Orlando. It can jumpstart you to 2023. So it's a new program for Dog Show Mentor. You know, I'm always creating uh, new content and new programs so that I can do the best I can for owner handlers. I am supporting you. I value you. And I value you equally to all exhibitors that are in the ring. So I hope that you will um, go to my uh, website and go to my Facebook, Dog Show Mentor Facebook page, my business page, and you will uh, be seeing a link to jumpstart within the next week before next week. So I will post that in Facebook so that you can see it. And I hope you join us with jumpstart. Alrighty. Anything before you leave? Before we close today? All right. Thank you all for being here. I'm delighted. Um, thanks for all the feedback and uh, interaction because it's always more fun when I get to talk to you and you talk back to me. You are welcome, Marie. Um, I thank you for being here. And Cindy, you're most welcome, Becky. You're welcome, Denise. It's always great to see you. Lisa, Sandy, so great, so great. Hi, Adrian and Jeannie, of course. So thanks for being here. I'm Lee Whittier, your dog show mentor, signing off. See you in the winter circle. Bye, everybody.